Well, happy Wednesday. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. We are almost two months away from the November election, and there's going to be plenty of things to unpack. Not just the candidates, not just the political spending, but also the issues. And one of the issues that uh, was touched on, at least in the gubernatorial campaign, was that of addressing crime. Good morning. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk, now 612 and expecting a high of 80 today. We'll, of course, keep you updated on all of the latest here all morning long, so keep it here with Springfield's Morning News. Uh, we got the council roundup after 7 o'clock. Uh, nice meeting last night. Some updates on carbon sequestration, uh, an update on that Enos Park development, uh, and so much more. So uh, stay tuned for that in the seven o'clock hour if you're interested in what's going on at Springfield City Hall from last night's Springfield City Council meeting. But yesterday, law enforcement officials all across the state shared some strategies in combating crime, but also they looked at the challenges they see coming down the line. And this is, uh, of course, going to be a heated issue as we get closer to the November 8th election. Early voting starts September 29th, believe that or not. Uh, But Tuesday morning in East St. Louis, Governor J.B. Pritzker was alongside uh, local officials down there and the Illinois State Police as well. And uh, they were uh, discussing a new Illinois State Police headquarters for East St. Louis. Uh, Here is Governor J.B. Pritzker uh, making that announcement uh, yesterday in East St. Louis. Today I am proud to announce the new state-of-the-art Illinois State Police Metro East Regional Headquarters and that it will be based right here in East St. Louis. The design process has already been funded and the project is being kicked into high gear. This is a giant leap forward in ensuring the safety of East St. Louis residents and the entire Metro East. It reflects what this region and all of Illinois deserve, communities where public safety works so all of our families can thrive. So again, the governor uh, making the announcement, uh, it's going to be paid for with uh, tax dollars that were uh, part of the 2019 uh, Rebuild Illinois plan the governor ushered through with bipartisan support. That increased taxes like doubling the state's gas tax, uh, increasing various driving fees. Uh, Gambling, I believe, also goes into that to a degree. Uh, So it's a $45 billion multi-year plan approved in 2019. Uh, But uh, this particular portion is uh, from state police capital funding uh, to the tune of, gosh, I want to say it was like $250 million or something to that degree. But this project in East St. Louis is going to cost $55 million. And uh, the Pritzker administration said that uh, it could take three to five years to to complete. Um, but again, uh, just now starting that process for that $55 million facility. Uh, so the governor also has been touting uh, the various uh, you know issues of um, uh, using tax dollars for uh, community gun violence prevention programs, and these would go out to nonprofits. Uh, it's a lot of money. It's 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 two hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, that's going to be released eventually. Uh, so far, I think uh, about $213 million has been announced. Uh, and Springfield could even get a little bit of that. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. But it seems like it's just a lot more money going out. And uh, gubernatorial candidate uh, Darren Bailey for the Republicans, uh, he he addressed uh, the, the concern of just uh, ongoing funds going out uh, without true oversight or a recognition of whether or not that's going to be beneficial uh, in the long run. Here's uh, Darren Bailey. And that's all we ever hear for solutions in Illinois. More money, more spending. That more money and that more spending never comes with more accountability and more transparency. That's all this man's done is continue to spend and waste taxpayers' money, throwing it at the four winds. We don't even have the infrastructure to fill a new state police office. 
We've heard we have got question. to start dealing with this. Last question right here. So, again, uh, the, the, the Republican candidate's critical of uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker's insistence on using more funds to address this. Uh, Bailey laid out a variety of things that uh, his administration would do if he's elected, uh, including the issues of uh, repealing the Safety Act and the Pre-Trial Fairness Act as part of that, and that uh, essentially ends cash bail starting January 1st. There's a whole host of other issues that uh, are also uh, at play here and uh, concerning to some, uh, including that of uh, what uh, Sangamon County um, uh, Sheriff Jack Campbell had to say uh, and how they are uh, seeing some of the things coming down the line of the Safety Act. Uh, and in particular, uh, Campbell told me yesterday that uh, they're really concerned about the the issue of the uh, three phone calls that criminal defendants can get uh, and how that could be dangerous because the individual who's suspected of a crime could possibly call uh, accomplices or co-conspirators uh, or possibly even intimidate witnesses uh, with these three phone calls. So that's just one aspect on top of the cash cashless bail, on top of uh, anonymous complaints against police. And these are things that um, uh, law enforcement across the state have raised concerns about. Uh, but uh, Sheriff Campbell, uh, obviously um, uh, concerned about uh, that and a whole bunch more uh, with the safety act. There's all kinds of issues they haven't really worked Worked out, and again, if they would talk to us early on in this process, we could have told them here's the type of things you need to allow for. So that was uh, Sheriff Jack Campbell after attending a roundtable discussion with Senator Bailey yesterday here in Springfield. And uh, Senator Bailey laid out again some of uh, his concerns and things that he wants to see happen ultimately uh, with the state's criminal justice system. Uh, he says that uh, it's too favorable for criminals and uh, there's not enough support for uh, law enforcement. He says that needs to change. Here's uh, Senator Bailey. And we will send a strong message to criminals by increasing penalties for individuals who assault law enforcement and reinstate the death penalty for convicted cop killers. Friends, crime is up and opportunity is down here in Illinois. At the time, and the time for change is now. It's today. We can't wait any longer. I'm ready to work with law enforcement to turn Illinois around. But first, we must fire J.B. Pritzker. So again, uh, obviously it's uh, political season and you've got uh, rhetoric uh, on all sides of this, uh, but uh, the incumbent is using tax dollars to promote uh, a variety of different new programs, including a new facility down in East St. Louis for Illinois State Police. Uh, the governor has also uh, touted uh, increased funding for uh, more state police troopers. Uh, but uh, when you get down to it, this is the policies of the Safety Act that has law enforcement uh, really concerned. Uh, but also standing next to the governor down in East St. Louis, Illinois State Police uh, Director uh, Brendan Kelly, uh, he was uh, you know heralding this this new investment uh, as part of the uh, Rebuild Illinois plan. But uh, the, the 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 police director, uh, the state police director, was also asked. Uh, about uh, another aspect of law enforcement that's happening down in East St. Louis. It's the Public Safety Enforcement Group. Uh, and he says that's a way to combat violence. The group was initiated in late 2020. It's an investigative unit. The state police says utilizes community-based trauma-informed approaches to violent crime reduction that partners with East St. Louis stakeholders. And here's Brendan Kelly talking about some of the strategies uh, and how they see that those have uh, worked over time. As was mentioned in our comments earlier, where we've seen crime kind of ebb and flow and, and an uptick in some areas, it's either been sustained or reduced uh, in this area the area that is the footprint of the public safety enforcement group. Uh, this model where we are interacting with the community and we, ha we are working with uh, the various wraparound services that are helping us to, uh, again, get better evidence, have better relationships with the community, with witnesses, with victims. Uh, that's something that, uh, as we measure over time, seems to be uh, very effective and is, is a model that's being re replicated in other parts of the state, uh, not just with ISP, but other local law enforcement agencies. So it's moving in the right direction and we share all those statistics, good, bad, and ugly, whether it's uh, uh, it's going great or whether uh, we're having challenges, and that's part of our, our culture, transparency, and holding ourselves accountable. So, uh, obviously, uh, a lot more discussion to be had about crime and punishment and uh, the justice system in the state of Illinois. Uh, and we'll watch all of that as we rapidly approach the November 8th general midterm.